Have you realized the importance that you and your co-workers at Betchley played in ending the war? Well, I'm learning more and more. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I, it, it's commonly agreed upon yes. that because of the work at Betchley Park, mm -hmm. World War II ended anywhere from two to four years sooner than it mm -hmm. would have without your work. Yes. And for that, I thank you. <laughs> I knew everything was highly secretive, and like I say, we were told not to dis, you know, discuss it with people, and uh, when I, what, the first day I went home, after being, you know, put into a billet and I went home, uh, I told my mother and dad that uh, what I was doing was highly secretive work and, you know, that not to ask me any questions. And they didn't. Hmm. They went along with me. They knew in order to keep me in a safe position. And, uh, and then one time... The American that I was going with, that I eventually married and had my two sons by, Bill, um, he had asked me if uh, they were going to set up a dance in uh, Bletchley Park, and I asked him if he would like to come, you know, and uh, somehow or another, when I sent the letter to him, there was something I needed to know, where to meet him and all this and that. They got a hold of that letter, and they said, who is this Bill Klusman, anyway? <laughs> I married him eventually, had my family. But um, it was not my fault. What happened was, in the office, they asked us to fill in the invitation and give them the uh, office of where it was to go. Well, I gave them Bill's APO number or something. It was not where it was. So I got called over the coals for that. But I just took it all in my stride. Somehow I think you took it a little more in stride. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, that's really far. Well I, well, I did. I went to the office and I said, how in the world did you get a hold of that? Oh, they said, uh, you know... We sent out the girls, and the office sent out the invitations. And of course, they got an answer back. Yes, they would love to come to the dance. So silly. To... After the war had ended, Dulce, and knowing the importance of the work you had done during the war, yeah. and couldn't tell anybody what you had done, how did you reintegrate back into society? Well, that was... They, they didn't know about Bletchley Park. They hadn't heard of it. Hmm. And a lot of my friends... At that time, uh, they were doing you know, other jobs, and they weren't interested. So I never, I never, you know, talked about it. I would talk about where I was staying, like with a private couple at the billet, and uh, I would talk about, you know, what I was doing for fun and that. But I just never got into, you know, what work I was doing. So, how did? Uh, Dulcie May mm -hmm. become Dulcie Klausman and end up in Montana? <laughs> <laughs> I know that's a very large question. Yeah. Um, well, um, I met him at Covent Garden. He was like, it was like he would be upstairs like that on a balcony and he was looking down with some other Americans and it was an afternoon tea dance. And uh, he's looking down over the back. When I look at that railing up there, I think about it. Looking over the railing, he thought, I tell you, I can be choosy. There's a whole bunch of girls here. <laughs> so he looked a little lot stronger, and he, he spotted me, and he come down the staircase, and when he got to where I was, somebody else had asked me to dance. So, of course, I went out on the dance floor. So he tried it again, and the same thing happened. This little group, the other guy asked me to dance. I went off with him. So he thought, I'm going to get down those stairs, and I'm going to stand right there. And when she comes off the dance floor, I'm going to ask her to dance. He said, I tried three times to get to you to ask you to dance. And so he said, uh, and he seemed like he was so tall to me, and... Uh, I said, oh, it does seem strange, you know, you in uh, uniform and all this and that. And I said, and you know, I'm a civilian. And I said, just what are we doing here? 
And uh, so then he started telling me about his family in North Dakota and all this and that. And so he said, I said, well, I'm ready to go now. I've got a train to catch. Well, he said, before you try catch that train, would you leave me your address and I'll write to you? And uh, so I gave him... I was not living at home in Alpert and Wembley. I was back in like, Bletchley Park. So I thought, oh, I'll never hear from him. So I'll give him that number. Yeah, that's, we found a way. So. Well, forgive me for asking, Dulcie, but was it the classic love at first sight moment? No. No? It was a friendship. Mm -hmm. And the friendship grew and grew. But we went together for quite some time, was, and uh, I invited him to come to my parents' home in London, and uh, my mother and dad met him, and, and then it was time for him to go back to America. And so, no, we, uh, we got married over there, and because uh, never knew whether things would work out. You just, marriage is a gamble, and, but it was a wonderful marriage. Did you propose to him, or did he propose to you? He proposed to me. <laughs> okay. I know. I think he just took me for granted. I don't. <laughs> I don't remember a proposal. No, I think All I know is he said he, he could be getting leave on such and such, and why don't you try and plan the wedding? You know, it was just something we were going to do, and it just. And it was a good marriage. I had two wonderful sons. I have one that lives here. And my youngest son passed away with leukemia. I'm sorry. Uh, he went to Australia. And they didn't tell him that these... They asked for volunteers to clean up a ditch. And when he got there, they had to take off all their clothes and put these things on. But it was uh, contaminated. So he developed leukemia and passed away. I'm terribly sorry yeah, to hear that. Yeah, that was a sad thing. Uh, that's the way things are. We had a wonderful marriage. So what caused you to leave the UK with your newlywed husband to head to the States? Was he transferred? Well, he was ready to come back. Mm -hmm. He'd been over there several years, and uh, and we were married over there. And then when he, uh, it was time for him to go back, when he was released, all of these, we call GI brides, they were all making uh, preparations to leave the home and go to America or Canada, wherever they were going. So we went to the foreign office and signed up and then waited until they assigned us on a ship back home for quite some time before I followed, but nevertheless. Well, originally yes, from yes, the UK. I did. Go, I arrived in New York City and we stayed there for a, probably a couple of nights and we got to tour all around while we were waiting for, you know, the, all the paperwork to be done, because everybody was scattered. Some were going clear to California. Some were only going to New Jersey. So we, we would have meetings, sign up, and I was the only one going to Bozeman, Montana. <laughs> so that they put me on the back of the train. Well, then you know how the train split up. <laughs> I was left there on my own for a, a day and a night, I think it was, until they put me on another train that was going into North Dakota where I was going to be hit, met by my husband. And, but I was the only one on that train that was going, so that was kind of a hard decision to make. Is there anything else you would like several generations since your time at Bletchley Park to know about your work there? Not anymore, no. They've got it all on television. <laughs> yeah, but you were there. <laughs> There's a little extra added credibility yeah. because of but that. But you know, having been sworn under the Official Secrets Act, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of a blank in you. Well, you know what you did, and you knew you had to do it right, or else. I mean, one little slip up if you mailed out to the wrong place, boom, you called over the coals. Are you still in touch with any of your former co workers from Bletchley Park? Uh, I was until probably about a year or two ago. Well, when I send Christmas cards, I still send to a girl that was working in the office that I, 
I had made up my mind last Christmas, knowing that I was going to be maybe coming here, that I'll just let it go now. I'll just We've got nothing in common anymore, you know, and families grow and people pass away, so it's a whole different era. Dulcie Klusman, thank you for your service. Uh, Dulcie, thank you for your time. Yes, I'm glad to meet you.